going on Bob Bob back again bringing you our next review this time we'll be discussing the epic RPG known as Dark Souls and exploring its world so without further delay let's jump right into the review the developers of Dark Souls are a very experienced team named from software who have a long extensive library including their first game Kingsfield which was released in 1994 to more recent titles such as Armored Core, Demon Souls, the spiritual predecessor to Dark Souls, and the main focus of today's video, Dark Souls itself. The concept of Dark Souls is fairly simple but well executed. It's a traditional RPG which while it is Japanese, it plays more like a western RPG would instead of a turn-based styled combat a la a Final Fantasy. Within Dark Souls 1, you are the chosen undead. After awakening in your cell, it's time to get good and escape that damn asylum that's holding you captive. You embark on a journey that will decide the fate of the first flame and the world it will usher in. The story in Dark Souls is told in a very non-traditional manner. By this, I mean very little is just said to you. Lore and such, you have to dig in deep and see what you can learn and theorize for yourself. This is the part of the review where we get good. Within Dark Souls, the gameplay is in a third person perspective. The combat places a heavy emphasis on timing of attacking, defending, dodging, and retaliating. The other main aspect of the gameplay is exploration of its world. The world is a large, non-linear area once you escape the asylum. Within Firelink, you are free to pursue any pathway that you desire, though some will be much more difficult for low-level characters. The controls of Dark Souls 1 are much more smooth and refined over its predecessor Demon Souls. Parrying and dodging windows are much more accurate and play more smoothly. For the console versions, the mapping of the jump key to the sprint key is awkward at times, and it will take some getting used to. On the PC version, it is almost unplayable on keyboard and mouse. The bindings are very, very awkward, and you're better off just plugging in a gamepad of your choice and the game does natively support the Xbox 360 controller pad if you have one of those. The foes within Dark Souls are very diverse, ranging from traditional fantasy foes like skeletons and dragons to much more bizarre and unexpected foes like a literal phalanx-like monster fighting in formation to the dreaded skeleton wheels which exist only to fuck you up the ass. The gradual scale up of foes and introduction of harder enemies and mini bosses is done in a logical manner and letting you assess the situation. The boss battles within Dark Souls 1 are also a highlight of the experience. Many of the bosses fight in unique manners and have a style of their own. One of the best examples is about halfway through the game where you fight the bosses Ornstein and Smo, where you are treated to a difficult battle that will test many of the skills you have learned up to this point. Immediately within Dark Souls, you are introduced to the tone of the game. You are thrown headfirst into a depressing dark corridor. You can see on the right, through some bars, a large stomping demon who acts as a jailer. And after learning the basic controls, you are immediately thrown into a boss fight. The option is to either fight or duck into a side passage to escape till later. Dark Souls' tone is all about a grim dark world, but it's also about not giving up, to keep getting back up on your feet, no matter how many times you're knocked down, and keep trying, as you will eventually overcome all obstacles with enough determination to see this fight to the finish. The soundtrack throughout Dark Souls 1 is a varied highlight of the game. 
From the calm, soothing melody of Firelink Shrine, to the somber, haunting vocals of Sif's fight, to the stark silence of large areas of the game, make these moments that have music all the more impactful. Each boss has their own theme that is meant to represent both their story and the struggle of your character against them. Each track uses a large range of musical instruments and vocal ranges to invoke a certain feeling for each fight. The sounds of the game are also well done and fit the moments they are crafted for. The graphics and performance really depend on which version you play on. On the PS3 version, Blight Town suffers heavily from a major lag, which is prevalent your entire trip there, though it is most severe in the upper areas of Blight Town. The general graphics of Dark Souls is pretty and have aged fairly well. For those that are more FPS focused and want a slightly more shiny coat, then you can check out the new Dark Souls Remaster, which upgrades the aesthetics and increases the FPS from 30 to 60 frames per second. Within Dark Souls 1, there does come several downsides, including bizarre and unplayable controls to the intense lag of Blight Town of the PS3 version. The controls of the PC version are easily remedied by plugging in a joypad of your choosing with the 360 controller being natively supported. The lag spikes in Blight Town are a more severe issue though, making an already challenging segment of the game even harder. Though this can be lessened by using the master key shortcut and going the back way into Blight Town. If you're playing the remastered edition, then all these issues should be fixed. And now we meet again at the conclusion of yet another review. So how do I feel about Dark Souls in its entirety? Well, Dark Souls, while a challenging experience, does do well with rewarding the player for their actions and making each challenge they overcome feel like something they earned and can celebrate in triumph. The gameplay is polished and refined greatly over Demon Souls. The cast of enemies and diversity of said enemies is greatly expanded upon. The atmosphere is one that really immerses you in how the game wants you to feel with the soundtrack or lack thereof at times reflecting this design well. With some truly breathtaking sights like when you first step into An Orlando. So given how I felt with my experience within Dark Souls 1, I'd recommend it as a buy. Because the positives greatly outweigh the negatives in this case. The lag is only an issue in one area and only on one version. So stick to the 360 version or the PC version if you do not want to deal with that. The controls is easily fixed with a controller for the PC version. And with the release of the remaster, these issues are wiped away completely and you can get the game for $40. Or you can buy a used copy of the original if you don't care about the updated graphics. This game is quite readily available in both used and if you prefer the remaster for modern systems, brand new. This has been Core 955 taking a look at Dark Souls. Thank you for joining me. I'm signing off.